Hi, it's Robin. Some of my earliest gaming memories are from playing the Commodore Pet both at school and at my friend Ian's around 1979 or 1980. Even though it was just a monochrome text display, it had the predefined Petski graphics, and the sharp 40-column display allowed for more complicated levels and gameplay, and a lot more text than the consoles of the day, like the Atari 2600. Now, I like Atari games a lot too, but the green glow of the pet really captured my imagination. Now, one of my very favorite pet games is called Dungeon, and that's what I have loaded up here. Now, thanks to my high school teacher, Mr. Hall, way back when, he gave me his collection of cursor tapes. And here in Cursor Magazine number 15, November, December 1979, is this game, Dungeon. So I actually have the original. This was a monthly tape magazine that started in 1978. And if you signed up for it, every month or two, you would get another issue of games and other programs to run on your Commodore Pet. So thank you very much to Mr. Hall for giving this to me so many years ago. This is one of my prized possessions. Even includes cursor number one from July 1978. Probably the oldest software I own. This episode's probably going to be pretty long and go all over the place just because of how so many things are connected here. But as always, there'll be an index below so you can jump ahead if you want to. So let's give Dungeon a quick try. It's by this Brian Sawyer. I'll press return. It actually takes about 60 seconds to generate a level. This may be the same Brian Sawyer that wrote this book called Programming Expert Systems in Modula 2 from about 1986. I'm not sure. I tried to find him on Twitter, but it was a different Brian Sawyer. So here we are in the dungeon. Gold is near. That's that G. So we use the numeric keypad here as a sort of D-pad, with 5 meaning just stay in your same place and skip a turn. 9 is to move diagonally up and right to grab that gold. Found 2 gold pieces. And 7 will move and grab more gold. Oh! A spider with 38 points is near. You found 2 gold pieces. And we just move on top of the spider to attack it. An attack. The spider has 18 hit points. An attack. The spider is dead. Your hit points have been raised. So I'm all the way up to 84 hit points now. So as we move around, and you can move diagonals. Oh, more gold. So he's passed through a door, and now there's a Gru. Is that, oh, the Gru is dead. Your hit points have been raised. You level up really quick. Grab that gold. So this is a very early instance of what is called a roguelike. It has a random procedurally generated level. It has moving monsters represented as ASCII, or in this case, Petski. It has the fog of war effect so that the dungeon gets revealed as you move around it. This is the game Rogue that is considered to be the standard of this genre. Now this particular version of Rogue is for the Atari ST. And if you can make that out there, it's actually from 1985. Never the same game twice. That's quite a promise, but it's the reason this classic continues to be the most popular game on college mainframe computers. Rogue is so full of unpredictable monsters, ever-changing magic, and hidden dangers that's never the same game twice. So this is the only official version of Rogue I own, essentially a remake of the mainframe computer Rogue, but that wasn't released until 1980. Dungeon here is from 1979. So Dungeon appears to be a pre-Rogue-like. If you look on the Wikipedia page for Rogue, some claim that Sword of Fargle is a pre-Rogue-like, but actually wasn't released until 1982 for the VIC-20, and then the C64 version came along in 1983. 
The thing about Sword of Fargle that might be earlier is that the author, Jeff McCord, who I actually met at the Midwest Gaming Classic some time ago, was working on a game called Gamma World 2, also on the pet computer, back from 1979 to 1981. Gamma Quest 2 probably predated Rogue as well. But I think what definitely predates Dungeon is a game called Beneath Apple Manor, which was first released for the Apple II in 1978. Now, big thanks to my friend David for getting this original version of Beneath Apple Manor running. The version on archive.org was broken, but he managed to fix it up and record this footage for me. It requires Integer Basic on the Apple. Now, this is the text mode of the game. Your adventurer is that Y. I guess that looks vaguely like a human. Now, note that this game was updated again in 1982 with more advanced graphics, and that updated version shows up a lot in screenshots and YouTube. But if you're trying to research it, make sure you look up the original Beneath Apple Manor that has this black and white mode that is also ASCII. So if Beneath Apple Manor really was the first roguelike game, then Dungeon very likely was the second, and presumably it was heavily inspired by Beneath Apple Manor. Okay, enough history. On to the reason I made this video. I played Dungeon as a kid at school and my friends way back around 1980, but then I finally got my own computer at home, which was a Timex Sinclair 1000 and then a C64, and I lost access to playing Dungeon. Finally, around 1990, I bought my own pet from my high school for $25, and then I finally found a copy of Dungeon, but when I tried to play it, it wouldn't work properly. Then I'd forget about it, and five or ten years later I'd try again, but it would be glitchy. I finally caught on, so no more. I want to solve this. So I started a new game. It seems fine at first, but if you just move into a certain area of the screen, you can see the glitch. That slash and dollar sign should not be there. <laughs> Actually, you see how broken it is here. So... See here, I can move into this area. And this is the glitch here. It's kind of like a fault line that runs through the dungeon of these glitchy characters. It also seems to mess up some other text sometimes. So my goal is to figure out why this bug is happening and to see if I can fix it. Now it happens on my newer pets, like the 4032 here. I don't have any working early pets. So I asked a fellow YouTuber, Chuck Hutchins, if he would give it a try on his mini pet. The mini pet is a brand new pet compatible computer kit from The Future Was 8-Bit, and Chuck recently did a build on his channel. I'll put links to both Chuck's build video and a link to where you can buy the Mini Pet in the description. The Mini Pet can switch between both the older Basic 2, that was common when Dungeon was made, and Basic 4, which my pet here uses. So he can try both to determine if that's the cause of the glitch. So take it away, Chuck. Here we are in Basic 2. Setup here takes a while. Okay, let's see what kind of dungeon we got. An attack. Spider is dead. Try to move over into this section of the screen that has the glitch, but we shouldn't see it in version 2.0. that spider kill me. Half my gold, no way. Hmm. 
And I'm dead, but the dungeon is revealed. And we'll switch the mini pet from basic two to basic four. And we're in basic 4.0 now. And we're waiting for setup again. Ooh, we got a monster right off the bat. And attack. That was easy. Gold is good. And there's a glitch. We have a tunnel. Shouldn't actually be able to move there. But because there's a character there, it lets you. Using the shift move function to come over to the side here. You're in between the walls like this, you lose hit points. So now I'm dead. But the dungeon's revealed. And we see this glitch in the graphics here going diagonally up here in the uh, upper right corner as well. Okay, thanks Chuck. I think we can be fairly certain that this is a compatibility problem between BASIC 2 and 4, and not a problem with the video chip or something else. It seems bizarre that such an iconic pet game hasn't been fixed in the 40 or so years since BASIC 4 came out. I tried many different versions I found online, and that problem is always there. Maybe it's because the bug is somewhat subtle while you're playing, mostly hidden by the fog of war, and you might not see the problem unless you know to reveal the whole map. So if we list the program, fortunately here on line 130, there was actually a comment left, rem trick. DG string array strings go at end of memory. This is similar to today, where we leave a comment in our source code that says hack, that we're doing something a little sketchy. So here on line 140, we dimension or define an array of strings called DG string, I believe standing for the dungeon map, that is 25 elements numbered from 0 to 24. And right after it, a string, E string equals and 40 blank spaces wrapping around. And then on the next line, line 150, we're doing a loop with the index from 0 to 24. And we're setting each element in that dungeon array equal to that E string, I guess empty, blank spaces. He's doing an append here, just adding a null string, just nothing in it onto the empty string. What this is doing is forcing pet basic to store this in string memory. Dynamic string operations, such as an appending, even though it doesn't actually do anything, forces the string to be stored in the heap at the end of pet RAM. If it didn't have that append, then it would just be storing a pointer back to this constant string here in the basic code. That's an efficiency built into pet basic. So essentially this is just a trick that is creating an array of 40 blank characters by 25 lines to store the dungeon in, which then gets revealed into pet screen memory as you wander around the dungeon. So I guess this seemed like a good idea at the time, but it is very much a hack. And there are better ways of reserving this memory, but I guess Brian either didn't know that or or whatever. Hey, it was 1979. So I'm quite sure that this is the problem. Now, as we've seen, this works in BASIC 2. So why does it fail in BASIC 4? Well, there are two main differences between BASIC 2 and 4. 
One is the addition of many disk commands, such as catalog, to show a disk directory, but that probably doesn't have anything to do with this. And the other major change in BASIC 4 is improved garbage handling. That is, when dynamic strings are created and then no longer needed, they become garbage, and Commodore BASIC has to clean up after that. That's notoriously slow on BASIC 2 machines, including the Commodore 64, but it was greatly improved in BASIC 4. So that certainly seems like it could be the cause of the incompatibility here in Dungeon. Okay, so let's head over to the Commodore 64 to see how BASIC 2 handles string allocation. The C64 has essentially the same version of BASIC as the early pets that Dungeon was written for, and it'll be easier to demonstrate there. So BASIC 2 has dynamic strings, meaning that strings can be variable length and can be dynamically created at runtime, unlike some very simple BASICs that actually don't have that ability. So I've got a short BASIC program here, and this is to illustrate how the dynamic strings are cleaned up by something called garbage collection. So these two pokes here set the top or the highest address that C64 BASIC will use to just under 16K from the beginning of memory. It's kind of like turning the Commodore 64 into a machine with only 16K. And the CLR clears variable memory, but leaves the BASIC program intact. That's necessary whenever you mess around with these BASIC RAM pointers. And this poke here, tells the basic editor to use page 60 as the start of screen RAM. When you first turn C64 on, screen memory is at location 1024, but unlike the pet, that can be moved on the C64. And the reason we're doing this is so that we can actually point the screen at string memory and watch garbage collection in action. So this is just to illustrate it. And finally, this poke, tells the video chip that screen memory is now in a new location. 60 times 256 bytes per page means that screen memory is here at location 15360, which is as close to the end of bank zero in VIC memory as we can get. Anyway, this is just to illustrate. You don't have to totally understand this to see it working. So if we run that program, now it says we're ready. Now let's just define a string like just a string equals dog and watch the bottom right corner. Dog appears down there. We didn't print dog. We assigned the string dog to this variable a string and it's stored it in memory down in that bottom corner. Normally you don't see that, but because we pointed the screen memory at the end of RAM, where strings are stored, we can see it. And if we set B string to cat, see it's stored right down there, cat and dog, cat dog. Now, if we redefine one of these strings, like A string equals horse, you see how it's still stored down here and it didn't overwrite dog. It's just stashed in RAM. This is a data structure we call a heap in computer science, but there is no longer any use for this dog. <laughs> there's, no, there's no longer any use for the string dog. Now a string is equal to horse and nothing points to that dog. But the C64 doesn't worry about it, just throws on the heap, but we can cause a cleanup at any time. There's two things that cause a cleanup. If the C64 runs out of free RAM, that is the string memory gets so full that it gets all the way down to the basic program and other variables, then it will automatically trigger a garbage collection to clean up. But we can also trigger that if we want just by using this free function, which shows the amount of free RAM so we'll just hit return and watch what happens down there. Right now we have horse, cat, dog. 
and you see how dog has disappeared. And now we have horse and cat, and we still have this HOR left over, but that is just left over from before. Basically, horse cat, which was here, got squished right up to the end of RAM, and dog got overwritten. So that's what all garbage collection does, is it gets rid of any unused data and pushes it and pushes all the valid data to the end. Now we'll look at how basic four does this. Okay, now back here on the pet, I've got a very similar program. Now it's got less set up. Actually, at first I thought it was going to be impossible to visually demonstrate the, the string handling on the pet. And then I realized that my 32K pet, it's got 32K of RAM that goes from location zero up to 32767. And then right at 32768 is another kilobyte of RAM that is the fixed screen memory. So I wondered, can I just point the end of BASIC, which normally ends at 32767, can I extend that up into screen RAM? Turns out, yes, I can. So I've just poked it here with an address that goes down to the bottom corner of the screen memory. And then again with the clear, just to reset variable memory. And then this print just switches to lowercase mode and clears the screen. And again, lowercase just makes it easier to see the pet ski that the strings are stored in as screen, uh, on the screen as screen codes. Okay, so now we're in lowercase mode. And now again, if we just do something the same, like a string equals dog, now you see dog is down back in the corner. But there are two extra bytes here that were not there on the C64. And if we do B string equals cat, so we've got dog and cat here, but we've got these extra bytes, two of them. Now, maybe you're catching on what's happening here. In basic four, two extra bytes are added to each string. And what those two extra bytes are, we're seeing them as screen codes, but really they are pointers to the descriptor for the string that is back lower in memory where the pet keeps track of all variables. It has a pointer from down in memory up to the actual string data. And what basic four has added is a pointer back. So the new garbage collection algorithm in basic four uses these pointers to greatly optimize so that instead of having a scan memory over and over again, it can do it much more intelligently with these pointers. So sometime I'll do a full episode about garbage collection. I've already talked about it a lot today, but <laughs> there's still more to talk about, but I want to get on with fixing this. <laughs> so the important takeaway here is that strings are two bytes longer that dungeon string that was 40 blank characters long is now 42 bytes and includes a pointer at the end, which is going to show up in memory. So the reason the garbage is running through here, these were supposed to be 40 character strings, but instead they are 42 characters and we are seeing the string pointers as if they are text. And that is causing this offset. Instead of all the rows being 40 columns wide, it's 42. And that's causing this wraparound effect where it's going a little bit further, where it's going two characters down on a diagonal each step. Okay, so how to fix this? Well, the first thing we're going to do is get rid of these offensive lines. I'm just going to rem them out. We could just delete them completely, but... Just comment them out with a remark. Lines 140 and 150. So instead of using this hack to reserve a block of memory, let's instead use that same basic memory pointer that we've been playing around with to just lower the top of memory enough to store the screen up there. So up here on line 100, we have set SZ equal to the number of rows times the number of columns. So 40 columns times just 23 rows. 
is the size of the level. So it's not quite a thousand bytes, but I mean, reserving more isn't going to hurt. That dungeon array is never used directly again in the game. It's just there to tie up that thousand bytes for the screen memory. From then on, the game uses this TS variable as the location of the top of screen memory. So what the code's currently doing is just taking the top of basic memory, this QM is defined as the location memory of the pointer that points to the top of basic memory. It's a little confusing, but it's just calculating the top of basic memory here, subtracting SZ and assigning that to where memory should start. So instead, we just want a lower basic memory. We're going to do that in a moment. And instead of all this subtracting SZ, we're just going to make sure that basic memory is set to the correct location to below the dungeon RAM anyway. And we just have to add one as an offset. Okay, so where is this QM set? Well, that's in a subroutine down here. 60300 and on. So this routine, it's actually pretty confusing. I think Cursor added this. I think Brian sent in his game to them, and then they added that title screen at the beginning because it was kind of like their <laughs> look and feel. You know, they actually had a standardized look to their programs. They were even thinking of that in 1978 and 9. Kind of amazing. And it was this kind of program that they would add near the end of the listing. So they'd clear the screen. Then they would clear the variables. Then they would go sub 60,400. So right here, this next section. And then they would go to 100. Well, why did they go to back to the beginning? Well, because when you clear variable memory, it also empties the stack, which has the return address for the go sub on it. So that thing's a problem. I will get rid of that. So I will. And then we'll be able to just return from here like properly. Okay, and here's where basic memory QM, I guess it just means memory. I don't know about some of these <laughs> variable names. Oh yeah, I should just point out if peak 50,000 equals zero, then return. This little section here, what it's doing is checking is this basic one or from basic two basic one just shipped with the very earliest pets and it's pretty buggy and but anyway they were still supporting it of course in 1979 with new games lots of people still had basic one on their very early pets so these are all variables like where the top of memory is located in qm that varies depending on what version of basic you have so that's what this little routine does, is sets a few of these key variables depending on which version of BASIC you have. Okay, and we just have one line left. We just go to the beginning of the program. Right in here, this is all remarks, just about cursor and Brian Sawyer wrote it and so on, and the location, anybody in Santa Barbara? But anyway, I want to put a line 80 in here before the program begins. And this is going to do a few important things to fix things up. First, it's going to go sub to that 60,300, which sets up all those variables. And then we're going to poke QM, the variable that was set by a routine. So that's why I want to get rid of that clear, because I want QM to be set properly that I can set this up before the program starts running. So we're going to poke QM plus one to peak. QM plus one, which is the high byte of the top of memory. And I want to lower that by four pages. That's 1024 bytes. That'll be more than enough. If we really wanted to, we could do a couple pokes and lower memory. If we don't want to waste that, that small number of bytes, you could add some extra code to do that. But anyway, this is good enough. Slightly wasteful, but uses less code. And then now, we want to clear memory and return. So that clear is necessary because we have changed where the top of memory is. And you always have to do a clear or that won't take effect. Okay, so I think that's our fix. 
I'm going to send this over to Chuck to give it a try on his mini pet, just to make sure it's all working there. Now we'll try loading Robin's modified version, still under basic 4.0. Robin's added basic 4.0 fix in 2020. Ooh, right away a snake with 48 points. An attack. Some good luck this time. Kill the snake. And we're back up to 48 hit points. Ooh, dragon. More gold. An attack. Oh, that was easy. I am invincible. Maybe something in here will kill me. Here we go. And I'm dead. And the dungeon is revealed. No glitch. Good job, Robin. Okay, thank you very much to Chuck for helping me out with this episode. Check out his build of the mini pet on his channel and give him a subscribe if you like what he's doing. Also, while I was researching this episode, I found a very interesting breakdown of Dungeon and a Python re-implementation of it by Michael Chijowiz. I'm not sure I'm saying that right. So check out his Reddit thread where he goes through and describes quite a few aspects of Dungeon as he was reverse engineering the original basic code and reworking it into Python. Very interesting thread. Link in the description below. Okay, thanks for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Thank you to my patrons on Patreon for supporting this. Thanks for watching, and we'll talk to you next time. Going to the dungeon That's what they called it Down in the basement At the university Ten years old, my aunt brought me. I just want to play R O G U E. Didn't know any other way. Delving in the caverns, fighting all the monsters, searching in the I was looking for the amulet of Yendor. It must be down here somewhere. I just wanted to play. Good idea to me. Thunderstorms make the power flicker. Twenty minutes 